Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me again. Look, I'm the MS elf. Tell me what bags you're trying to buy. <laughs> I found this hat. Um, well, actually, no, I didn't find it. My housekeeper found it. Um, I think it was in storage. And she's like, look, I found one of the Santa hats. You love them. It's Christmas time. I was like, oh, no, I thank you. I'm going to be wearing it in my video today. So, uh, but today's video is, of course, one of my big age dragging videos, okay? But this one is a little bit more international. We have many uh, places that we're going to talk about today. And then we'll talk about a few big age um, odds, odds and ends that maybe don't deserve their own video. There are a few things. I want to kind of rant a little bit, and then I'm going to answer some of your questions, because I was like, hey guys, ask me questions. I feel conversational today, and a lot of you did, so thank you for that. Okay, so let's start off with the first story. Okay, so the first story is from Amez Mumbai. This is actually a requested um, boutique, so I look, started looking into it. Um, it's really interesting, like a lot of the stories. There's some good reviews, and there are also people moaning and complaining about customer service. This one I really liked because this one was interesting. It kind of it kind of jives with the things that we have been talking about um, and goes with the things we've been talking about when it pertains to like vlogging in the store, taking pictures. So there's a client who took a picture of like the store display and then the security like came out and yelled at them. Okay, so when we, whenever we talk about these things, you guys always tell me like, well, how come this influencer is vlogging in this store and how come this influencer is vlogging in another store? I think like the issue with pictures and some of you have also told me in Premier Chats like, the issue with pictures is things like privacy. Not everyone wants to be in your luxury shopping vlog, okay? Um, and it's funny because today, Edwin and I were talking about um, my Parisian vlogs because I've, like basically when we go, I'm gonna start planning like what types of things I'm gonna be vlogging. And he was like, well, you know, like what types of things do you wanna vlog? And I'm like, I only want to vlog if I'm buying something. I don't like, I, I, I am personally just not comfortable with the idea of going to a shop and vlogging and if I'm not buying something, I feel like if I'm buying something, I feel a little bit more comfortable with that. But even then, you know, you have to respect people's privacy. However, in this Mumbai story, I don't really see um, what the person did wrong. The person took a picture of the store display. They were outside of the store. And this particular story reminds me of another Chanel dragging story of the, again, the Cambon boutique in Paris, striking it again, honey. And I remember that that particular client was shouted at <laughs> by security for taking a picture outside. I mean, I'm sorry, but people want to take pictures of the boutique outside. I mean, I think that's a little bit aggressive and I think that's a bit over the top. So I think this particular story, I'm siding with the customer. The customer took a picture of the store display. They went inside the store, like vlogging the entire store, vlogging customers. Definitely, like if you're inside the store, you're gonna end up like filming people, particularly, um, by the way, if they're young children. Fun fact, did you know that the company that owns this platform, Big G, has very strict rules about children appearing in your vlogs and in your videos? When we upload our videos, you have to like literally tick some things pertaining to children. And if they're children, there's certain rules about, I think even comments get turned off on certain videos if children are in the videos a lot. And I personally, I'm not really a fan of like the idea of vlogging or taking a picture if someone else's child is there, you know? I don't have children yet. But when I do have kids, I feel like I would be a little bit annoyed if, you know, my kid turns up in your shopping vlog and I haven't, you know, um, you haven't got my permission for that. So I think in this particular case from the Mumbai store, I think the security is a little bit overzealous. They took a picture of a store display, honey. Okay, it's a store display. Why are people being weird about this? I have a theory about what's going on with Big H at the moment because definitely like there are a lot of you who told me like, hey, how come, you know, I'm seeing all these new things and stuff. I think that some of the really touristy areas because of the holidays and Christmas, they're a little bit more relaxed, I think, than they would be normally. Because I do think that there are other places where they're like, you take your camera out, you will be checked. I mean, definitely for sure. I've heard many times of people being checked in like the Cambon store, the Avenue Montaigne store. Like if you take a, like your camera out, take a picture, security will come up to you and say, hey, you're not allowed to take a picture. Now for me, I've already been shouted at in Paris when I went with Edwin like all those years ago I got shouted at and I've told you guys before in the Mac store and I remember just telling the security like relax like for me I would understand if it was like Chanel or Hermes and you coming over tell me hey you can't take a photo but it was like the Mac store on the Champs-Elysees I was like ah 
please, okay? I am not here for you trying to check me. So I don't think that the security should have checked the client who's outside of the boutique taking a picture of the store display. I mean, so what? I mean, so what? That's kind of how I see it. So that was a mesmer buy. That was very interesting to read that story. Um, I also got a request to look into a um, mess Bangkok in Thailand. Um, I believe there are two boutiques in Bangkok and um, they're both very, very competitive. So I started looking through like a lot of groups that I'm part of and yeah, Bangkok is super, super competitive. There seems to be this idea floating around in a lot of English speaking groups that because Bangkok is like a touristy location, people think like, hey, I can just go there as a tourist and ask for a bag it's it's not going to happen there is a very wealthy local clientele like wealthy um people who are from bangkok who live in the city who shop there you have expats who live in thailand and live in bangkok who are shopping there as well so this idea that you're gonna like walk into hermes bangkok and try and buy something without spending money and get like a kelly 25 it, it, it's just not going to happen so i think sometimes like when it pertains to these stories i think sometimes people get random ideas you know we always hear about the mexican boutiques um i've told you guys before about a mez istanbul lots of people have said you know if you go there you spend five thousand euros six thousand euros you could probably get a curly 32 maybe um we've also heard about saint bart's um so saint bart's the mexican stores and Hermes in istanbul those are like the three locations where you constantly hear that hey if you spend a little bit and you ask for a bag they'll probably offer you one but um definitely bangkok is extremely competitive so um, if you're a tourist and maybe you're going to Thailand, maybe you think you can get lucky, um, it's highly unlikely unless you're going to be spending once one. And even then, they're probably going to tell you it's reserved for local clients, which reminds me of another boutique, okay? Um, and there's Copenhagen um, in Denmark. The Copenhagen store is probably one of the most difficult European stores. I actually know people who have tried um, to score there. I know them personally, and I've done lots of research as well online. It's a very difficult place to score. Um, the Copenhagen store, like let's say you're a tourist and you go there and you're speaking English because obviously Danish people are bilingual. They, I'm sure if you walk in there, you're like, hello in English, they'll respond. They'll be like, you know, I'm sorry, but the quota bags are reserved for locals. If you cannot speak Danish, you're not sc scoring in Hermes Copenhagen. Sorry, 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 I'm sorry, but it is what it is, okay? I am the Hermes elf, but I'm not coming here to sugarcoat anything today, okay? We're coming here to talk about things how they are. Okay, so the next dragging story is I think my, my personal favorite one of today. This one is actually from Hermes Dubai. I believe this is the boutique in the Dubai Mall in the United Arab Emirates, okay? I love covering the boutiques in the UAE because I just think that they're so interesting. The reviews are always really interesting because people have no idea that um, a lot of people who are writing these reviews do not know what they're getting themselves in for. The Dubai and the Abu Dhabi stores are incredibly competitive. You know, we throw the competitive word around a lot, but they really are. So the story um, from this particular store, I actually shared it in my Facebook group first before I came here, is this. There was a couple, they basically were like really excited, like, hey, you know, we're going to Dubai. They had scored a bag um, a few years ago called they had gotten a quota bag i think from another boutique in north america and they were going to dubai and they said that they were going to try again so they go to the boutique um in that um, shopping center um they asked for a bag um and the essay seems like the essay liked them was trying to fight for them but the store manager wouldn't release the bag at the end of the day um i think that they got like a pegas um charm i think they bought some twillies um i think this idea and i'm, so, I'm sorry you know, no disrespect to, the, to this couple, because when I was reading this story, by the way, it's on Google reviews, you can just go read it there. I'll post some of them and I won't post others. It just depends on how it looks on the screen. But um, I think this idea that you can just like walk in, okay, into um, one of the most competitive boutiques in the world and buy a Twilly, okay, and get like a Rodeo or a Pegas, whatever, um, and get like a Birkin or a Kelly or a Constance, frankly, I think it's like, you know, you're just living in the clouds, honey. Okay, we need you to come back from that planet that you're in where there are these horses with unicorn bags and come back to planet Earth with the other horses where there are no bags, okay? So I was reading that story and I was just like, there's just no way. So 
then the in the story he's like you know they were really really disappointed because the essay, they clicked with the essay the essay tried to get them a quote back it didn't work it's not going to happen you know you need to spend one to one um dubai abu dhabi is absolutely one to one and dubai is a similar situation to the bangkok stores really really wealthy local clientele they're also um, royals, so members of the Emirati royal family, so princesses, okay? And you have experts who live there who are spending in the boutique. And you have tourist friends. So you have four layers of extremely wealthy people. You've got wealthy locals, you have wealthy royals, you've got wealthy expats, you've got tourists who have lots of money to spend as well. I think the idea that you're gonna walk into the Dubai store and ask for a twilly and then ask for a quota bag, I mean, God, like, guys, we need to stop this. Like, the bag is not going to come out of thin air. That's what I was saying in um, my Facebook group. I was like, hey, guys, like, people are just not with it, honey. Like, people really do think, like, they're going to get a bag without spending money. So I thought that was really interesting. I'd love to kind of talk to you guys um, in more detail about that. What do you think of this idea? And yes, I know there'll be those of you saying, I had my unicorn experience. You might have had your unicorn experience, but you have probably noticed that has been a decline of videos this year on youtube i monitor this stuff because i'm nerdy and analytical and i enjoy this kind of analytical part of it last year we saw tons of people filming videos of scoring birkins and kelly's and constance's without spend because there was that window of time because of c19 where big h was releasing bags but now things are basically going back to normal in 2022 i think things will be completely back to normal and um this idea that you know you could like walk into like a really competitive store without spending money um it's not going to happen so in our facebook group we were discussing um, this topic of like how to get the offer quickly and meredith one of um, my facebook group members was saying you know again go go buy a watch like if you buy a watch you'll get the you'll get the offer and i agree like watches 100 percent, particularly watches because like Big H is crazy about that timepiece business. They're really passionate about that. And at the end of the day, I think a watch also shows them that you're not like a reseller. Even if you have your own plans for that watch, like you're buying a watch so you can be offered a bag quickly. I do think that offer will come quickly. And quickly is a, a sort of nebulous phrase. Like, what does that mean? You could might get the offer the same day. They might tell you come back the, the next day. They might tell you come back, you know, in two, three days. I also have another theory, again, I was discussing it in the group with other group members that, particularly the, the European boutiques, the European boutiques, in my opinion, they say things like, oh, I'm sorry, it's just for locals. Definitely Copenhagen and Amsterdam, you have to be Danish or Dutch for those two stores. That is 100% facts. But I have heard about people scoring in Nice, in Cannes, in Madrid, after spending one-to-one. -one. So if you're going to spend one-to-one, -one, like, you know, and you're willing to spend one-to-one, -one. maybe you buy a watch, maybe you buy a bracelet that has a diamond in it, and then gently, they, they might even offer you um, a bag. I remember reading that in a group, like someone bought like a fine jewelry bracelet in one of the European stores. It wasn't any of the three Parisian boutiques. They bought a fine jewelry bracelet and uh, the essay was like, hey, would you like to see some of our handbags? And that was the, you know, the cue, obviously, <laughs> for a back in a Kelly or a Constance. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I'd like to get a back in. And she was offered a bag after buying a fine jewelry bracelet so you might even get the offer but i think this idea that you're not like you're gonna walk into a store and again it's social media people probably been watching youtube videos watching instagrams and tiktok <laughs> watching reels and tiktok videos like okay well that person just walked in you know i'm gonna be offered a bag it's gonna be really easy for example leon like i feel like leon honey like Leon is flopping. Like people are not scoring quota bags in Leon as walk-ins right now. Like I've been hearing lots of stories about Leon all over social media. Leon is not what it used to be. I think I think Leon was that well-kept secret before, but because of social media, like people are descending on Leon. And Leon, I've said before, like Leon is where Interpol is like headquartered. So you have this like vibrant like diplomatic expat community with people who have a lot of money to spend as well who actually live in leon and who will, who will be shopping in that boutique so i think this idea that you know you're gonna jump on a train and go to leon and score like a birkin 25 that day maybe it's a little bit unrealistic you might have a better chance of maybe scoring a kelly 32 which by the way i like that size i actually think it's quite nice and i think the kelly 32 looks really nice in um certain colors i think it looks great um, and, or maybe you're back in 30, uh, back in 35, maybe, maybe you have a chance of scoring that, but, um, 
you know, the idea that you might score a buck and 25, like immediately. I mean, I don't know, unless you're going to do one-to-one -one spend. One of the biggest issues I've noticed about Leon, particularly whenever I see it in Facebook groups and things like that, is that people are not willing to spend money. People want the idea of, okay, I, I didn't get an appointment in Paris. Okay. <laughs> Let me go to Leon and, you know, try and score and walk in and ask for a bag immediately. I think the Lyonnais um, essays, they know, honey, like, they know that people are, like, coming from Paris and coming to Lyon. They're just going to be like, no, we don't have anything. No, we don't have anything. I think, you know, you have to be ready. You're going to buy that watch, like Meredith suggested. You're going to buy a fine jewelry bracelet, okay? You're going to maybe buy a lamp, honey. Like, their furniture is pricey. Someone go buy a lamp, okay? Or buy one of those, like, they've got these super cute, they're so beautiful. You could buy them, um... What are they called? God, I just had a mind blank. They're rocking horses. I saw one on the website. They're cute. They're very unique little pieces. Buy something like a furniture piece, perhaps. That could make you stand out. Um, those of you who are who are um, equestrians, like go out there and go spend some money. Okay, you're gonna get your back. So um, I think this idea that you know you can go into like a really competitive boutique and ask for a highly sought after quota bag. So for example. There's some of you who live in the United Arab Emirates and you've told me before, like, oh my gosh, like even the Kelly 32 in the UAE is a desirable size. Like all of the bags are desirable, like the Birkin, the Kelly and the Constant. So this idea that, you know, you're just going to walk in there, like you're going to buy a Twilly and you're going to be offered a bag. Okay. It's just not going to happen. The final story is from the Vancouver boutique. Okay. Um, it's not really a story. It's someone who left a review whinging and moaning, but the review was quite... Um, it got quite corrosive and quite toxic, so I didn't really want to post it, but it is there on the Vancouver page. There's one thing that the review talks about that I wanted to talk about because it, it it's like ref refers to pre-spend. So the review talks about how the Vancouver store wants you to spend $50,000, uh, obviously it would be Canadian dollars, um, on accessories before you can be offered a bag. Look, I don't know what else people expect. I think again, social media and you guys, you know, you guys, you might think, oh, okay, me always whinging and moaning about, you know, people being offered things and they didn't have to spend money. You don't know what people are spending money on. Okay. I follow a lot of big H VIPs and they are buying other things. Like people are buying other things and 50,000 Canadian dollars. That is a lot. Um, I don't know about the idea of spending 50 K Canadian um, before I can get an offer. I think maybe that person's exaggerating a little bit because they're upset that maybe they didn't get an offer. What I do know from all of my research is that the Toronto boutique, the Vancouver store, and the Calgary store are very, very um, competitive. I know that there's also a boutique in Montreal, so I'm going to follow up on that store as well because I'm very curious about that because obviously that is in the francophone part of Canada. So I'm very curious about the Montreal store like would it maybe be easier to score there if you're a francophone um is it easier to score there if you're from montreal and that is your home boutique is it easier to score there if you speak french or does that not matter i'm very curious about that anyway so i just thought it was really interesting i mean again fifty thousand in pre-spend i think is harsh but even in the group we were talking about how it's just so refreshing that the um mainland the chinese boutiques they're just so honest how do you like you need to spend money like the essays in the shanghai beijing um, boutiques will just be like look you need to spend x amount and then you're going to be offered a bag i find that refreshingly honest i would like to see all of the stores worldwide move in that direction because i think that's just just such an honest way of doing business so what do you guys think of this idea of someone having to spend fifty thousand Canadian dollars on accessories before being offered a bag? I think this person probably didn't spend up to fifty thousand Canadian dollars, but they're upset because they have to buy a lot of other things. It's the way the cookie crumbles at Hermes. If you do not want that, okay, you can go to Celine. You can go to YSL, which are by the way great brands. There's nothing wrong with them. You can go to Gucci. Gucci does not require shenanigans. Okay, you just go there and buy what you want. It is what it is, so make sure you tell me what you think. Okay, so now I'm going to answer some of your questions and we're going to have some chat. But actually, before I do that, because I need to tell you something that happened, which I'm devastated about. My phone was stolen. My other phone, um, my red phone that I used, um, like I used, to, I used it for like pictures and things like that and editing my thumbnails. 
that was stolen okay and so if you guys have probably noticed the past few weeks like i haven't had it in my videos so um, i took all of your questions i actually wrote them out by hand because i'm gonna buy a new phone soon um so i'm gonna answer your questions but before i do that i want to just kind of talk about like one of my pet peeves i think about some some people who like big h and i don't see this in the chanel community i don't see this in the louis vuitton community either so this is, i'm in this group and it's a big h group and on facebook and like we were discussing paris and some people are so stubborn and stuck in their ways when it pertains to paris like this idea that you know that there are a few of us discussing like like basically if you are Parisian, is it easy for you to get an appointment right now? It is. I, I literally know I know people in Paris who are getting appointments. And if you're a French citizen, it is easier. And there was someone who was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. My experience is my experience is that. I've noticed that um, when it pertains to BH, like people really center their experience as the experience when it pertains to the stallion. You'll notice this like whenever I talk about unicorns. I remember one of my <laughs> older videos where I was like, hey guys, I'm sorry, I hate to be that Debbie Downer, but many people who are unboxing bags without spend are unboxing larger size bags, are unboxing Kelly 32s, um, you know, Birkin 35s in those bright colors. And by the way, you still scored at, the, at Big H, honey. You still got that, you still got on the horse, okay? And you won the race, but you know, you, you, you got a bag without spend because it's not desirable right now. And by the way, I love bigger bags. I think they're coming back. I love bright colors. So I have no issue with that. And I remember like people would come on my page and drag me and like, well, they still got an offer. You don't have a bag. I'm like, look girl, I can wait for my bag. Whether I get my bag in Paris or not is irrelevant because I was still like a mess and I'll be, I'll wait, <laughs> you know, I'm patient. So I just think like sometimes like in the MS community, it can get quite, people can get quite like, I don't know, quite set in their ways and quite obstinate about their views when it pertains to Big H. And I don't see that in the Chanel community. I don't see that in the Louis Vuitton community. Um, you know, some, some people have this like my way or the highway attitude to Hermes. And I, I just find it just so strange because it's just all over bags. It's just so weird to me. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of just share that. Okay, so I want to answer some of your questions. And yes, I'm heartbroken about my phone. Please don't ask me how it got stolen. It's just so heartbreaking. Um, so let me start off with some of my YouTube questions. The first question is from Jen. She says, what bags do you think will be their it bags like H? She's talking about Chanel because this is on my Chanel video. I actually think, this is a great question. Um, I actually think um, Hermes already have their it bags. And I think their it bags are 100% like the Pearl Crush. I think the Pearl Crush is so hot right now. That bag is really, really hard to get. Like in every collection, the seasonal Pearl Crushes are super hot. People love those um, adjustable straps. I think the My Perfect Mini, I wouldn't say that's an it bag though. I do think the Pearl Crush is an it bag. I think the Coco Handle is an it bag, even though it's not my personal taste. People love, seem to love the bag. Um, and while I wouldn't say that the Chanel 19 is an it bag, I do think the Chanel 19 is very popular and it, it, it has worked. I think when the bag came out, lots of us were like confused. I've grown to love the bag and I love it now. And I think it's one of their, their best bags that they have um, in their portfolio. Another question from Jen. Um, again, this is about Chanel. She says, um, it seems as if they are playing uh, like um, H, Hermes. So if the Birkin is the classic flap, is the Kelly, the Coco handle, and the Constance, the mini flap? Yeah, great question. Um, I think that what they're doing is they've realized like, like if you want to buy our bags, that's cool, but you need to pay. <laughs> that's what they're doing. I'm like, they're like, you need to pay. I think like the Kelly... It's, that's a good that's a good comparison like the coco handle and the constants being the mini flap i actually really like <laughs> these comparisons um i think that they've just realized like the best way to keep people away who they don't want carrying their bags is to make the prices as high as high as possible i know many people find that very offensive but i actually think that's the i think luxury that's the whole point of luxury it's like the people who can afford it will buy it Okay, the next question is from Roman. Roman was asking me about the VIP tiers at Louis Vuitton in the US. So when I saw this question, I got straight to work for you, Roman. I found out the following. I believe the VIP tiers, it also depends like the boutique in the US because you do have certain boutiques that are going to be more competitive than others depending on the location. But broadly speaking, it's 50,000 US dollars a year for the US. 
it's sixty thousand pounds sterling for the United Kingdom, and I, I did see someone in one group say it was fifty thousand Australian dollars if you're in Australia. So those are the three, and it starts there, and then it goes up, and it goes without saying that if it starts at fifty thousand US a year, that's it's not going to be mostly be made of canvas items. I mean, just to give you um, some context, like fifty thousand US, like you could get like a Python capucine mini and that will be like five thousand dollars perhaps that's already like ten percent of your vip spend gone if you buy like two hard-sided luggages you can hit that very soon if you buy exotics they're hard-sided luggages if you buy those super creepy um chairs that they make that they are forcing down my throat like every time i go on the louis vuitton website i swear i see those chairs just like hey again we're here you can't hate on me um it's easy i think to hit um this threshold of 50,000 US um, if you buy the exotics, if you buy the hard sided pieces, um, and if you buy a ready to wear, you can hit it very fast. Um, and they do have those like lifestyle pieces, like the chairs and things like that. So, I mean, I think it just depends. And definitely, if you buy like fine jewelry, you're gonna hit those tiers quickly. So, 50,000 US dollars, it starts there. 60,000 pounds and for the, for the UK, and 50,000 Australian dollars, give or take. But those of you who are in Australia, tell me if that sounds correct to you, because I saw someone in Australia mention that in a group, so I just thought I would share as well. Okay, the next questions are from Instagram. Holly asked me, what's my favorite bag in my collection right now? It's not a luxury bag, but it's a bag that Edwin bought me um, for my birthday last year. It's just a neutral chocolate brown bag. Before the whole chocolate brown craze was a thing, my husband bought this for me, so I do think that's really cool. Um, the next question is from Happy Girl. She asked me if Cartier offered me three gifts. Um, hold on, wait. No, if Cartier offered to gift me three jewelry items, what would they be? Um, f first of all, this is a great question because you know I love Cartier. First of all, I would ask for one of the high high jewelry bracelets that are literally they start at hundred thousand pounds in the UK. <laughs> I'd ask for one of them. I'd also ask for one of my holy grail items, which is the Pave um, uh, bracelet, which I think in the UK, um, no, in the US it's like $44,000. And then I think I would ask for um, one of the like uh, Cartier love earrings. I think that's what I would do. God, I love Cartier. These, Cartier have never taken an L in their life ever. Please, please. I wish Cartier would fail at life, but they can't. The next question is also from Happy Girl. She asked me, what's my favorite thing about Edwin? I like that he supports, uh, I like that he supports your channel. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, I would say one thing I really like about Edwin is like, he really marches to the beat of his own drum. You know, I've told you guys before, we live in a very conservative country with deep, deeply, deeply conservative values. Um, you guys, you see me here, you see my channel, you know, I'm doing my videos in English. Let me tell you, honey, like if I was doing my videos in Swahili, like people would have pro would have issues with me. People would be like, your husband lets you have this channel. Your husband, you know, how can your husband let you have this channel? Like Edwin is very much an independent person. He does what he wants to do. And in a world where everyone conforms to, to similar, like to the same ideas and everyone thinks the same, it's very refreshing to be with someone who has their own point of view. And that's something I really, really like about him. I think that's my favorite thing about him for sure. Um, the next question is from Wangu. By the way, Wangu is from Kenya and Kenyans and Tanzanians were like, we have this like friendly rivalry, <laughs> okay? She says, what fashion house do you think will have their first East African store? Okay, well, first of all, Wangu, you know very well, okay, <laughs> that in terms of East Africa, I don't know, like, I feel like I, I, I feel like Nairobi could handle, I think Nairobi could support like a pop-up Louis Vuitton store. I don't know if it could be like a full-blown boutique, like the way they have in Johannesburg or Cape Town, but I think Nairobi could handle a pop-up store. So maybe a seasonal store. I think if I'm not mistaken, Chanel have a seasonal um, boutique in Capri. So it's only open for like a few times in the year. I love that idea and I actually think that Louis Vuitton could do that for East Africa. So those of you who might be curious, like what countries are considered East Africa? Let me just say, we have this thing called the East African community. You've got Tanzania, got Kenya, we've got South Sudan, <laughs> Burundi and Rwanda. Those are the five countries that are considered 
in the East African community, but of course, you know, you we would like East Africa, of course, includes Ethiopia, of course, it includes you know Somalia and Eritrea um, and Djibouti. Okay, so those countries I've mentioned the East African community, and I've added those other ones I've just mentioned now. That's East Africa. So I feel like Nairobi could handle a seasonal Louis Vuitton pop-up boutique. And yes, I thought about this. Someone, someone, tell someone from LVMH to call me, okay? Because I have their African strategy ready, okay? Um, so yeah, I love this question. The next question is also from Wangle. What are my thoughts on Longchamp? Um, by the way, Longchamp is like the brand that my like family loves. Like that is the luxury brand that my family loves. So um i actually like longchamp i like a lot of i like a lot of the products that they make i think that their products are super discreet and elegant um i actually like a lot of their leather um, pieces I, I actually prefer that their other pieces not the the le pliage i know that's like their most famous iconic um uh, like products but i actually prefer their other products i like their slgs as well i definitely actually need to look more into long shop i also like the fact that they're privately owned i like these brands that are privately owned i think that they have more edge and they have more personality as well the next question is from chrissy chris can you share some when you go traveling can you share some de del some details about delvo yes i can i'm gonna look into delvo i think delvo is like one of the oldest like luxury brands ever like that's still in in existence today so definitely gonna look into that you know me i love like the history like i love the history of like them like you know starting out you know and like trying to make things happen like i resonate with that um again my dogs want my attention they keep barking i don't know why they're barking so hard today um the next question is from us uh stella she says if i could have three bags tomorrow which ones would they be and why i mean definitely i feel like i'm gonna mention two holy grail pieces so my the chanel trend ecc i would love to get that um but that's not a priority right now because i need to score at big hey Chani, okay and the next one would be the dauphine from louis vuitton those are my two holy grail pieces and then i'm gonna add in a wild card this is wishful thinking this isn't for 2022 but i would love love to have the himalayan kelly I said it. I've said it. The cat is now out of the bag. God, please think about me. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> and, and yes, I know how much it is from the boutique. Okay, it, it, it is a horrific amount of money. So if I buy that, I won't be telling Edwin, honey. Okay, I'll just be like, oh, look at my new handbag. <laughs> the next question is also from Stella. She asked me, um, what's my favorite thing about having a YouTube channel? I'm really glad that you asked me this. This is the final question in the Q&A. Um, I think my favorite thing about having a channel is like connecting with you guys um, and engaging with you guys. That's my favorite thing. I remember in the early days of this channel, I'd have like one comment a week and I'll be like, I'll tell Edwin like, I'll get a comment this week. And he's like, it's amazing. And even the other day he was watching one of my videos and he was reading some of your comments. He was like, whoa, there's so many people. It's so amazing. I was like, I know. So I think engaging with you guys, wherever you are, like I said, I know there's some of you who don't like Facebook and that's fine. I know some of you are quite private and you're like, hey, again, I don't think I can join the group. Like, you know, I don't use my Facebook account that much. It's cool. I'll find you wherever you are. If you're on Instagram, I'm going to be opening my luxury Instagram page soon and I'll find you there. If you're on TikTok, I'll find you there. I think I enjoy the engaging the most and interacting with you guys. There's some, um, not, not necessarily luxury channels, so I don't want you to think I'm like, you know, try, saying it, taking a shot at anyone because I'm not. But there are some like lifestyle channels. I've noticed lifestyle channels do this more. Like there's some lifestyle channels who think they're too good to respond to people's comments. And I've told you before, like, even if I don't agree with you, I'm still going to respond to your comment um, and I'm going to, you know, share my <laughs> views in my Michael Jackson voice because I enjoy engaging the most. Um, but just to add on to your question, Stella, I think the thing I probably don't like the most um, out of having a channel I think is kind of the scrutiny, scrutiny that comes from pe people outside of the channel once you have a channel. Not you guys, and by the way, it's not you. It's actually the scrutiny and the like weird, creepy comments that I get from other people like, oh, so like, I remember just like, I was at this family event and someone was like, oh, I heard your mom told me you have a channel. Cause my mom knows I have this channel. Um, and my mom's called it. Um, and like I said, at the end of the day, Edwin's my husband. My mom is my mom. They're the two most important people in my life. At the end of the day they are the two most supportive people of this page so if they don't care that i have a page like i don't care what anyone else has to say so i was at this event it's like oh your mom told me you have a youtube channel so like you think you're like famous now do you think you're a celebrity i'm like 
I do not think anything. Like, why are you projecting? I think that's the only thing about having a channel that's a little bit annoying is like the scrutiny that you get from other people and frankly, the judgment. I don't really care about that because like I said, my husband and my mother um, do not care about this page. And like I said, Edwin is very supportive. And when I, in the early days when I would miss upload days, you know, he'd be like, what are you doing? Why are you not uploading? You need to go upload. You promised to upload. You better go do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Let me go upload. No one's watching my videos, you know? But then, you know, it's true what they say. If you build it, they'll come. So hopefully, you know, things will keep going. I've, I've told many of you guys that before, the whole engaging thing. I know some of you are like, well, some people have massive followings. They can't engage. I'm, I'm sorry. That's not true. I was watching Jackie Aina's, one of Jackie Aina's videos recently. She literally had like thousands of comments. I have never, okay. And, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Literally. I'm sorry. There's thousands of comments on her page and she was responding to people. Some people only respond to people who are like also verified on YouTube. So some creators will see someone who has like a big platform like them. And, and if that person leaves a comment, they'll respond to them, but they won't respond to other people. But I was really impressed. I was watching one of her videos. She was responding to so many people. She can't, she, she, of course she can't respond to everybody because she gets thousands of comments on her videos, but she was responding to a lot of people and she's got millions of subscribers. So at the end of the day, if she's got millions of subscribers and she's responding, like we can all respond. And that to me is like the most important thing. What I have found though, is that it's easier to respond to your comments on YouTube. Definitely notice like on Facebook, like Facebook will miss sending notifications. Instagram sometimes doesn't send me like all the notifications either, but definitely like Facebook is, is like good. I mean, YouTube is good in that regard. So I would say, yeah, that's probably my favorite thing I've told you and also my not so favorite thing, but so far so good. You know, I think I'm having a good time on my channel. Um, and my channel is not like too intense. I think posting every day for Vlogmas is like quite intensive considering the fact that I'm also working my full-time job, but it's like Christmas, you know, once January hits, I won't be posting um, every day again. I'll go back to my weekly schedule. And for as long as you guys watch my videos, I'll continue to post. It's that simple. You know, I, I, t I tell you guys algorithmic stuff because, you know, sometimes you guys are like, hey, how come like, you know, people talk about the same brands all the time. I mean, we, we literally don't have a choice. Like, I want you to watch my videos. So I have to talk about Chanel, Hermes, and Louis Vuitton so that you watch my videos. You know, it's, it's harsh, but it is what it is. Anyway, you guys, if you like what I'm doing, please consider fully subscribing. Tomorrow is Sunday. So as you know, I don't post videos on Sundays. Um, so yeah, I'll be back with another video on Monday. I've got so much great content coming up. Um, I can't wait for my trip, but that's going to be happening in the new year. Um, I'm going to film lots of um, vlogs. I'm going to attempt. They might not be as amazing as other creators' vlogs. There are lots of, so many, there's so many great um, luxury shopping vlogs. Oh my God. Go watch this um, vlog by Leslie Adina. She's a German luxury YouTuber. She was just in Paris at the Big H stores. God bless her because she filmed a vlog and she zoomed in on the price of the Kelly Pochette in Ostrich. Remember, I've been trying to find out the price of the Kelly Pasha in Ostrich and the Mini Kelly in Ostrich. Um, so she actually posted that um, like in her vlog and I was commenting on her page like, oh my God, thank you. It's actually 8,500 euros. And I found that out from Leslie's video. I will link her video below so you can go check it out. So go watch that. Um, but yeah, you know, like there's so many great vlogs. Her vlog was fantastic, amazing. I love that um, Parisian vlog that she filmed. Um, so I don't know if I can film as good as that. I'm, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to film in boutiques when I'm, if I'm buying something, I feel like I'm more comfortable with that. And I feel like I should do w what I'm comfortable with <laughs> you know, because I'm just such a little scaredy cat and a coward. So I feel like I'll walk in there and be like, I, you know, I, I've had times when I have filmed videos at jewelers in Tanzania. Um, vlogs and I've just scrapped them. I haven't even uploaded them because they haven't like met my standards for vlogs And I'm not saying I'm really good at filming. I have a lot of work to do I need to get better equipment, but I'm doing the best I can considering that I do also have a, a full-time job as well It is really intense like the people who do this as a job honey like this is their career Salute to them because they and, and I know that people always like influencers saying they're working so hard like filming a few videos a week and reels is not working hard i agree it's not like hard work like the way healthcare workers and by the way thank you to all the healthcare workers who watch my channel thank you for keeping us safe and healthy i agree it's not like really 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 hard work but some of it is hard honey okay i don't know how 
people film these vlogs, okay? Because I'm trying to learn. But I will definitely film like a, I think I'm going to film like a Paris travel vlog of me and Edwin. And Edwin has said he's going to be in my Parisian vlog. So look, if my husband says he's going to be in my Parisian videos, that's already a win. So I'm excited about that. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video wasn't too long. I'm also trying to figure out lengths. Tell me in the comments, do you like my videos long like this or do you like them short and sweet? By the way, short for me is 15 minutes. So do you prefer like 15 minutes or um, videos like this? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on Monday in my next video.